You're such an asshole. Hello, children. We have a very short but very interesting question, and I had to sit and think this one through. And I think it's going to be of great benefit uh, to all the boys and girls out there, and young and old. Uh, although I think older people probably have unplug themselves from the matrix enough uh, to figure the answer to this. But if you can figure this out by, before you're 25, hell, before you're 30, you're going to be light years ahead. And thankfully, because of the technology today, ideas are being spread more quickly. You are not in a echo chamber or a cocoon where you don't have outside uh, forces or outside ideas infiltrating into it. That, that's over. Ideas could be sent around the world in a matter of a half a second. Uh, but I had to really sit and think about the answer to this one. So, keep anonymous requesting a video response. Please do a video that shows your complete detailed answers or answer to the most difficult question you've ever had for yourself leading up till now. I said, well, you mean like for asshole consulting? One of my most, he says, or, I mean, do you mean my life? He says, well, either or. I mean, your, your life, like your entire life experience. I'm like, oh, shit. So I sat and I thought. And I'm like, okay, where did I really screw up? You know, like, what, what major life mistake? What did, how did I have this? What was my biggest problem? And like, how oh, was that girl I fucked it up with? Oh, I majored in that. And, and then it dawned on me. It was not so much an error or a mistake I made, of which there are plenty and they're egregious and there's many and some of them keep me up at night. No <laughs> doubt about this. But this is hands down when I, th I was like, holy shit, this is it. This is the biggest problem I ever faced in my life. And it is something I can almost guarantee it faces every, everybody else, um, whether you are aware of it or not. And that was answering the question, what is wrong with me? All right? What is wrong with me? And not just on a overall, but like in many, uh, not many, but, but several key and specific regards in life. Like what is wrong with me? Why am I failing? Why am I not having the success that I thought I, I was going to get, that I was told I was going to get, or what I worked really hard to earn? You know, there's a lot of, there, uh, certainly I earned it, but just because you worked hard for it doesn't mean you're going to get it. And so let me explain to you, <clears throat> the context of the question, what is wrong with me, so we can practically apply it to our lives and hopefully benefit everybody. And then you'll say, oh my God, this is an amazing video I'm going to afford because it's Asshole Appreciation Month. All right, when I was younger, like many of you, I was miserable. I thought I was failing at life. I wasn't happy. Not that I didn't have fun times and all this, but as I interacted with the rest of society on various levels, I mean, I was a nerd. People wanted to fight me all the time. I could not get girls to save my life. And I kept trying to change because you want to succeed. You know, I couldn't hold down a job. I'd always ram heads with management. I, it's just like, okay, obviously I'm the common variable. I'm the common denominator. There's got to be something wrong with me. So I spent, depending on what capacity, we're talking about what's wrong with me in capacity of working with bosses, education, social life. <clears throat> it took, in some cases, damn well near 25 years to figure this shit out. I don't mean from zero to 25. I mean like from about five years old, you're starting to interact with other people, to, to, to like five, let's say, yeah, like uh, you're, you're 30 years old. You're like, oh, now I finally get it. All right? So I was always trying to figure out what have I done wrong how am I feeling? I got to change this so I can start succeeding. Now, the reason this was the hardest question to answer is twofold. Right? Because the solution required an incredible amount of arrogance. Plus, we did not have the internet. When I was younger, we did not have the internet. So all these ideas, these truly new avant-garde, uh, cutting-edge envelope philosophical ideas never existed out there. You take away fathers and nuclear family where traditional wisdom was passed on and Gen X on had been completely lost, especially Gen X. Again, we did not have the internet. So you had to figure this stuff out on your own. So you are getting the shit kicked out of you in terms of social life, girls, work, uh, dating, friends, everything. And you are racking your brain trying to, so you would spend decades and untold calories of energy trying to figure out. But it got so bad, so bad, 
where I tried this, I tried that, I changed this bottom, I tried that, nothing was really working. That the I mean, you got to think about how many changes and adjustments and variations and tweaks and, and twer or complete overhauls. <clears throat> changing my clothes, doing this, doing that, changing my haircut, all that other stuff. You have to realize how many rocks were, were unturned or turned over and not left unturned to draw, to, to finally come to this final conclusion without the internet saying, what if it's not me? What if the problem is with the rest of society? Think about the huge arrogance and the statistical impossibility of that. I'm not the one with the problem. All you 6.9999999999 billion motherfuckers on the planet have the problem. And there was no way to figure this out. I mean, there was nothing like going on the internet and the people saying, oh yeah, this out, let me tell you a little side story, okay? This was common. This is common. Everybody down in the, who's, who's my age or older, they're going to understand this story, all right? Let's talk about girls, for example. You would think, because you were trying to date girls, girls were shooting you down. You're thinking like, boy, my school really sucks. The girls at my school fucking suck. And if you were a nerd like I was, what you would try to do is date girls in other schools who didn't know you were a nerd or a loser or whatever else like that. <laughs> and that worked kind of because they didn't know your reputation. Again, there was no internet. There was no Facebook. So you have your friend across the street who, because they were across the street, were in a different school district, and she would set you up with, with her uh, cute friend Amy or whatever. Right? And that did actually work a little bit. But what we didn't realize is we thought there was something wrong with our school. We thought there was something wrong. Like, yeah, there's something wrong with, with the girls in this school. Maybe you would even say this town. But then you were also led to believe, oh, man, I just can't wait. I remember we moved <clears throat> from Milwaukee to Amory. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get to Amory. You know, God, get the fuck out of this. Cause these fucking preppy girls from Whitefish Bay and, or White Man's Bay. I'm, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And I got to Amory, and it was the exact same shit. It's like, what the fuck is going on? This school sucks, too. And then when you find out, when you get into college, you slowly like, piece of, you, really? You got stood up to it at, over in Nebraska? And wait, you got stood up in New York? We didn't see what was going on at the time, but the naivete, because you were so cocooned in that environment, you thought, oh, it's got to be, you know, the behavior is so unacceptable, it's got to be the school or my reputation within the school. Right? So, uh... That's just an example of how we didn't have the internet. We, we, we were led to, but now we all know in hindsight, you compare, it's like, no, there were huge nationwide trends going on that basically spoiled most girls rotten. You had the 90210s, the Melrose Places, uh, the Girly Girl Teen Magazines, all this bullshit. We didn't really see it or pay attention to it as boys, because why would we? But that is what... Pretty male, not to mention the feminist indoctrinations have an answer, and then you get to college and then it's turned up to 11. We didn't really see that because it was analog. We didn't have the, the digital Google Maps to look and say, holy shit, this is what we're going to, let alone the network, Manosphere, Red Pill, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> to start comparing notes saying like, yeah, I noticed that trend too. And holy shit, it's nationwide. So that's before all this. That's why this is the toughest problem. I ever had the toughest question I ever had to answer because there was no way to confirm it. And when you had, again, <clears throat> tried every other option, you're only, and you were forced to say, fuck that, fuck them, fuck the rest of society, I'm fine. I did it right. And all of a sudden, that actually kind of worked. All of a sudden, it made sense on paper, it made sense in theory, and you were a little reluctant to believe it. It's like, what? there's nothing wrong with me? and everyone else has the problem, it was amazing how almost the very next day uh, things started working out. All, right. all of a sudden girls, you know, like, girl didn't call you back, <clears throat> fuck her. Didn't say hi to her in the cafeteria, this goes back to college. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, I, I shut up. Well, how did you, just shut up, I got work to do. I, I don't have time to deal with you. What? And then all of a sudden, oh, well, now she wants to go on a date. Didn't really understand it at the time, but to figure it out, through detective work, analog, and this is the last Hail Mary pass because there's nothing left in the I got There's nothing left. The only thing left is society and not me. That was the hardest thing. So, how did, how did that play out? Now, keep in mind, it's not just a general what is wrong with me, but there are four key things, key areas, where it's important to realize that there's nothing wrong with you and that there's something wrong with society. 
Right? And so I want to address these four because, I mean, we could talk philosophically about it all the time, but it's not going to be practical or applicable to your particular life unless I give you examples of how it works and then thank God for the fucking internet uh, that we can answer. Because, man, you, don't want, you, do, you did not want the two decades, two and a half decades of bullshit. Not just me, but millions of other young boys and girls, well, Gen Xers now, had to go through figuring out this bullshit. All right? So let's talk about concrete examples. First, of, I'm going to do it chronologically. First and foremost, girls. Uh, this is the number one thing in men's lives and boys, I think, are the number one thing in girls' lives, but I don't know how fully indoctrinated they are now with the new social justice warriors. But back in the olden days, anyway, <clears throat> we were all about the girls. How do we get girls? What do we do with girls? And we'd fail. Oh, did we fail. And I don't mean just the nerds. Pretty much every guy failed. <laughs> He just, no, there was that cool guy, okay, captain of the football team, okay, that really good looking dude who was really ripped. All right, we understood that. But then Skis Ball McGee with his fucking Iron Maiden shirt with his fucking hair and his skateboard. How the fuck did he get the girls? You know, we didn't know. And so you are racking your brain because you are genetically programmed and only on an upward testosterone. If, you know, from 13 on, you're going like this up to about 18 or 19. You're like, girls, 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 girls. And you're probably like, oh, you mean you fuck. Fuck your degree. You guys all went to college for girls. And I know you did because that's why I went to college. That was the first thing I maybe I'll pick up a degree along the way. So you have two really big forces working against each other. And you're smack dab in the middle. One, your genetics. And then two, just the complete, utter shit, crap, lack of training, decorum, and etiquette and quality that girls were supposed to get, but they didn't. And instead, they got this feminist, indoctrinated, leftist, careerism, you go, girl, boys are icky, girl, and just BAM! And just, you know, perfect example. This was going back probably about 25. I was, this, I had a date, the date stood me up. And then I, I had just had it. I had had it because it was the rule of 50, 50, 25, but in practice, about, there was about a 70% flake rate I had back in the 90s and the early aughts. So I just called my mom. I'm like, Ma, I got a question. And she's like, yeah. I said, okay, back in the 60s and the 70s, did you girls stand guys up? Like, I mean, honestly, Mom, did you stand guys up? Was that like a thing? Or is this just a new thing? And she was appalled to find out that the majority of dates, the majority of women, would stand men up. They'd say yes to a date or give out a number, but then they'd stand the guy. they go to the extent of setting up a date. And it's one of those things where it's like, fuck, this is unacceptable. I am right. Society is wrong. You shouldn't stand people up. Period. I said, Mom, I need outside confirmation because of the internet. Oh, we would never stand here. Oh, my God. No, and I know my grandma wouldn't stand people up because they were moral people back then. <clears throat> but it shows you where you are just getting smashed in between how women were raised and how your genetics are programmed splat and now you guys like and you guys have been there you got stood up uh, i'm sure you guys have endured temper tantrums with these crazy spoiled girls um i'm it's just it was so long ago I, I remember like oh my god i forgot that it's almost like getting a flashback i mean i had girls that would go ghost on me and then want to introduce me to their parents and say oh this is the great guy i'm dating like who the fuck are you um, just the, the, the insane amount of bullshit where you had a generation of girls raised on divorced single moms and, and broken family homes and Melrose Place and 90210 and the dramatic bullshit. And these completely unaware guys, <laughs> and then comes a train and splat. <laughs> and so you, that's that. Now, practical example, all right? It got to the point, I remember in college, this is where my first epiphany, Terrence Pop talks about like you have this epiphany at about 34 because that's when your big brain starts overthinking your little brain. But at 21, I started realizing in college and, and in part because poverty forced me. I mean, you gotta think of the extremes. Like I didn't have, I was either eat or go on a date and I kept getting, I would get stood up. My previous girlfriend wouldn't have sex. And I remember saying, fuck this shit. I don't have time for this crap. It's no, fuck you and fuck you and fuck you. I'm studying, I'm taking an extra shit. Are you sucking? I remember, I'll tell you the story again. Accidental alpha. Again, falling into it. 
I dated a girl, she wouldn't have sex. I dated her a year and a half, but it was almost moot because I saw her maybe once a week and I had to work and go to school full time. It was like, eat or what? Get blue balls? What's the rule? <laughs> so I broke up with her. Um, and then there was another gal. She's this very cute East Indian girl because I worked at the computer science building security. And she would always talk to me for like a year. She'd come up and chit chat on me trying to do my work. I'm like, yes, what is it? I won't mention her name. I'm like, yes, what is it? And he said, oh, well, there's this guy called Brian. I have a crush on Brian. And then she wanted me to coach her on how to ask Brian out. And it never really came to the point. I'm like, God damn it. I, it was finals time or something. I'm like, I got to do work. It's been a year. Ask the fucking guy out already. And she's like, okay, well, will you go out with me? I'm like, what? She's like, well, you're Brian. I'm like, huh? Well, I kind of liked you all this time. Now, you got to imagine how much courage it took this girl. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you want to see why I'm an asshole? Here it comes. So it's this poor East Indian girl, sweet, nice, cute too, very cute. Finally has the courage to tell the guy she has a crush on it. And, and I, she says, so would you go out with me? I'm like, no. I'm just like that. I'm like, no. And she's like, and you could just see, I took her heart and I was about to rip it out. She's like, why? I said, because you want to have sex with me. Oh, oh, I'll do a lot. I'm like, no, no, I'm either having sex or not. I'm sick and tired of you good eating two shoe girls where I just get blue balls. And she ran upstairs crying. <laughs> but that was, that was figuring out, no, fuck you. I have standards. Society is wrong. It's not irrational for 21 year old college student, male, to expect to have sex with his girlfriend. And then all of a sudden things started getting better, in, in part because I was like fed up. I'm like, I don't have time for this, all right? Now, I didn't consciously know what was happening at the time, but I was at least standing up for myself saying, no, fuck you, society, and you shitty ass women. These are my standards. I got other shit going on. And then all of a sudden, in that senior year of mine, holy cow, I had like, I just had dates up the wazoo. Uh, no, no one, of course, no one's going to have sex, and that's why I kind of would get rid of them. Like, once I found, oh, no sex, bye, you know. That, but uh, that was at 21, where you at least said, I don't care what society says. 25, after getting stood up enough, da, 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 that was kind of the real epiphany where I really took the red pill. And then you started getting internet. Then you're talking to your fr male friends, and you started to see, uh, not necessarily coming down to a singularity, but you started seeing these trends and laws start to coalesce and then especially <clears throat> between 25 and 30 you started to realize holy shit as more and more information came on the internet just what a concerted al although not conscious effort was being made to basically ruin women for men and men for women um and why dude there was nothing wrong with you nothing wrong i'll, I'll tell you the story again i'll tell you another story i've told it before but this time I knew exactly what was wrong, and I didn't feel bad about it. <clears throat> I was a banker in my suit, teaching dance classes. After go work banking, making good money, then I go teach dance classes, make even more money. I, know how to, I mean, it was, you know, I'm like, damn, I'm pretty good. So I went to the Times Cafe, Vic Filari and the Filari Lounge Orchestra, which is still around, by the way, you can look them up. They're playing, great dance floor, bunch of single gals. And here I am, dance instructor, banker, you, you, in shape, good looking, you know. It doesn't get much better. And again, you might say that's arrogant and cocky. No, that's a truthful, accurate assessment about the only thing you could say was, hey, he's kind of short. That was it. So I remember asking one girl to dance, and she said no. And then I asked another girl to dance, and she said no. And then I went to a table of girls, asked one girl to dance. Like, yeah, yeah, no, you blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, fuck you, cunts. And after about the fifth time I got shot down, I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to ask every single girl that's you know not obviously spoken for to dance. Right? And I just wanted to see if they'd all shoot me down. Sure enough, 31 women shot me down. Now, that would crush most normal, ignorant kids. That would have crushed me back in 1987. <clears throat> but I knew. I knew. Make good money. Got a career. Got some great hobbies. Know how to dance. In shape. Fuck you. You're wrong. I'm right. 
31 women were wrong that night. I was right. And that's not an opinion. That's not debatable. You say, oh, you're an arrogant. No, 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 no. Guarantee you, every 131 of those gals went, why can't I find a man? Why can't I have all the good men gone? It's like, dude, you just had a banker, ballroom, dance instructor, as who likes jazz, by the way, ask you to fucking dance. What more do you want? Should he have showed up on his F-16 fighter plane, maybe? But by that time, you kind of knew. Yes, there is the instance, more often than you think, where society is wrong and the individual is right. And it especially pertains to young boys and girls. It especially pertains to boys when you go out and date girls. Trust you me, dude. As long as you keep your nose clean, this is a key thing. You have to be that banker, ballroom, dance instructor, in shape guy. You can't be some fat and mean. Don't be a virgin towel, right? But for those of you who put your time and effort in to be a presentable, upstanding young man, and you get your ass shot down by women, it's not your fault. And like I said before, we can kind of know that now with the internet. Pretty easy to answer. Not nice, you get your ass shot down, you might get your feelings hurt a little bit, but that's what galvanizes us into men. But imagine doing that, what, 13, for 12 years, minimum 12 years, having no clue, thinking there's something wrong with you. That's a real hard question to answer. When, when, you, when you think there's obviously something wrong with you, right? Second thing, education. This applies to everybody, but more so girls than boys. Because you girls are lied to by society left and right. They are lining up not to kiss your ass, but they're buttering up to fuck you in the ass later on. And we're talking higher education, right? Uh, this was, again, particular to me. Um, I was given the same slop, follow your heart and the money will fall. I loved economics. I studied economics for about a year and I'm like, wait a minute, I, I, I don't know if this is going to result in a job. So I even went to 3M and I asked, I don't know, their HR guy. <clears throat> I said, what about everybody? He says, you should maybe major in finance. I'm like, okay, so I switched to finance. Never listen to baby boomers. Just don't listen to them. But here I was given the same lie. I've given the same universal cacophony of lies. Follow your heart and the money will fall. Any degree is a good degree. It doesn't matter what your degree is in. It's just as long as you have one. It's what you do with your degree. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. And again, without the internet, couldn't really tell. How it, well, it comes from our elders. Our elders, the baby boomers who are so wise and have led America to great new heights. <laughs> Jimmy Carter. So like girls, like everything else. Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to go major in this. Oh, and then I go and intern and all that. And then when I graduated, 3.96, no debt, six months early, it was a huge, couldn't find a job to save my life. And what jobs or internships I did find were complete bullshit. Now, I thought it was just bad luck. Internship after internship where it's like, oh yeah, you're going to get great experience and you're filing and faxing. Even jobs were, even as a senior credit analyst, here I am scanning in documents. Because I couldn't, and I was like, I always thought I'm having bad luck. I always thought, no, I got a, I got a high GPA. I graduate top of my class, blah, blah, blah. I should go ahead. You were lied to about that. Is there something wrong with you? You think, oh, God, what could it be? What? Whoa, I got to change. And now you go through that same process of turning up every stone, changing everything about you. You interview, you do mock interviews. You, you read one article about what your resume should be, the next article says something completely different. I remember, literally, two different HR people telling me contradictory things, like, don't put your internship or your security guard experience there. Do put your security guard experience there. Well, which one is it, you stupid fucking bints? You, they don't know. They don't know. And so you're running around trying to put out fires. You have no clue what's going on. If you were poor like me, you needed the fucking money and you needed this career, to, this degree to pay off. All of a sudden went through a huge depression where I couldn't find a job. I was just like, what the fuck? You know, I busted my ass off. Of, what is wrong with me? And it's the same thing. There's nothing wrong with you. You were lied to. You majored in the wrong thing. And a lot of you girls are starting to wake up to this. Where, oh, I got to get this degree and I have to get my master's. And then you go work, part-time social work job, and then you bitch and whine making your only $35,000 a year. Not understanding basic economics. Well, yeah, when two million of you girls every year go major in social work and there's only 
maybe 50,000 jobs new a year coming out and they're all part-time. Well, yeah, you're not going to get paid that much. So what ends up happening? Well, everybody wastes their time. Everybody works jobs that they hate. Everybody thinks they're failures because they're not achieving what they were misled to believe by their parents, teachers, guidance counselors, professors, uh, and, and whatever other propaganda was, was shoved down your throat. But then women in particular, don't know if you knew this, you may want to have kids someday. I know, I know. Test tube babies and you can have kids until you're 60. Uh, but deep down inside, most of you want to get married and have children. All right? But no, now you got to get your master's degree. Now you got to become a lawyer. Now you got to become junior junior partner. And then all of a sudden you're 40 and it's like, yeah, you shouldn't have kids now. That's too much of a risk. It's, um, no. And, and, and good luck finding a guy who's going to want to marry you at 40. Because you're not that hot anymore. You've pissed away your beauty. And I know it goes against everything you've been indoctrinated. Oh, beauty does oh, make it beautiful. I, 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 that, 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 that reality. Asshole consulting right here. Which only means education. You know, most guys will repurpose their degree. They'll figure it out. Or they'll just minimize and like get by with whatever education they have. Women, you've replaced your life with education and your career. And that continues to ruin your life for the rest of it. What was it? Terrence Pomp said from 40 to 80, that's a long time to be alone uh, because you didn't capitalize on your beauty. Don't argue about reality and biology, okay? While you're young and pretty, go find yourself a man, good quality man. Don't be chasing after your masters in social work or women's studies, whatever the fucking bullshit it is. Uh, but again, you, you follow that advice. You're all of a sudden a 58-year-old woman with her master's in public health administration. You have student loans. You don't have a 401k. You just got divorced with your husband. You're, dis you're piss poor. Hell, the article, brilliant article by The Guardian, but he didn't realize how it, about all these adjunct professors, all of which were women above 50, recently divorced, living in cars, not able to make their money, having to file for bankruptcy. All right? They're wondering why, what happened? Society lied to them. All right? They say, what did I do wrong? Well, you can go back and tell them what they did wrong in hindsight, but based on what they were told and the cocoon environment that they were in, they followed the advice that their parents and their indoctrinators told them. Right? And that is a immensely painful life to live through. Being a 58-year-old with student debts, uh, you know, with your cats, and not having love nor family. Uh, and, and so that, But think about the Herculean effort is going to take that woman to wake the fuck up and say, wait a minute, what if everything I was told was a lie? Because that's, that's what they have to face now. It's the same thing. All right? What's wrong with me? What, oh, obviously, I did something wrong. What did I do? Or is it I was lied to this entire time and I have to completely rethink my entire life, which is practically over. 75% done by that time. And your youth is certainly gone. It's going to take uh, not necessarily arrogance, but an amazing amount of courage, fearlessness, bravery, and, 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 and heroics to say, I was lied to and I wasted my entire life. I'm trying to prevent you guys from doing that. That's why this question is so important. There's nothing wrong with you. It's the people that are telling you the lies and the bullshit. There's something wrong with society that we channel women into worthless degrees, tell them to get masters, tell them to ignore kids, tell them to ignore family, ignore their own lives. And yay, man, fish, bicycle, cats, cat food, no fallen K, dead, and no one's at your funeral. So that's where education. <clears throat> Closer related career. I've already addressed this with the women where you're, you know, you're led and misled to believe society. Everyone tells you that the career is the most important thing in your life. And you keep thinking, what's wrong with me? Why am I depressed? Why am I on antidepressants? Why am I miserable? It's like, well, because you've never had the courage, the bravery, to ask an independent question, what if everything I was told about my career was a lie? Um, but that, as that pertains to women specifically, because there's a sacrifice. Women have an opportunity cost if they pursue a career. They sacrifice their children, their birthing, and their beauty. Universally, though, for both men and women, we face another problem. Um, and that is, okay, what's wrong with me? If you're like me, you're a particularly smart person, you always rammed heads with management. And you thought, okay, I'm not a good employee. I'm not a good team player. What's wrong with me? Again, what are the chances that all your employers are wrong versus that there's something wrong with you? Well, let me tell you about the banking industry. I don't know if you heard about it. This happened when I was 
30. <coughs> 31, 32. Um, and this didn't dawn on me. I always thought I was a bad employee. I always thought there was something wrong with me. I would always ram heads with management. Uh, and, especially in banking, uh, I would do the numbers. I was a credit analyst. I present the numbers and I get yelled at because the numbers weren't good enough for what the bankers wanted. I'm like, well, it's numbers. The, we have a formula and here are the financial statements. I don't control this. I literally plug the numbers in and if you don't like it, yell at the Excel spreadsheet. That didn't matter. So I was getting yelled at. So here I am. The numbers were just showing me. Uh, people say, well, how did you know the housing bubble was coming? It's like, it's pretty easy when you look at the numbers. And I kept saying, look, this goes against lending policy. This isn't a high enough ratio. That isn't a low enough ratio. This is just a horrible, we're not going to get our money paid back. I was looking at people with credit scores below 400, and I'd still have grade haired baby boomer fucks coming at me, yelling at me, saying, well, you don't understand our business. We're here to help out the little people. I'm like, they're not going to pay us back. There's not even collateral to go collect. What the fuck? Think about the shareholders or the taxpayers, as you guys found out, as they freshly shoved their dick into all your asses. Uh, so here I am thinking, what is wrong with me? Am I not a team player? Am I missing something? Am I, you know, I'd go over my models. Did I do the math right? Da 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 da. Well, then there was a banker, and uh, he was on my case to get this client of his approved. And this client of his, no matter how you measured it, he was losing money hand over fist. He was this, uh, if you read my book, Behind the Housing Crash, it's um, Yorba the Swede. He was this Minnesota fuck. Uh, he was always playing out in Wysese with the fake rich kids. And he had, he had an actual fuck medallion with gray chest hair. And he's like, oh, I was talking about, oh yeah, we're down to Lake Havasu, we're doing golf, and oh man, I got this girl with big titties. He's like 60 years old. We're gonna deal's a deal. Don't worry, Jim, we're gonna come on down. And, and I'm like, I don't care how charming and charismatic or how many big titted 23 year olds are sucking his dick down at Lake Havasu. I told the bank, I didn't say that to the bank. I'm like, there's he's not making money. He's losing money. He just, don't you see how he borrowed money from the other bank to pay us? And now he's going to borrow from us to pay that. This day does not generate positive cash flow. And, uh, no, no, you're just not, uh, everything. Just, just the third degree. Well, then this banker comes in real sheepishly one time. Hey, Aaron. I'm like, yeah, dickweed. I didn't call him dickweed, but I should have. Yeah, stop working on that loan, which I wasn't because I don't know, you know how many times you want me to analyze the same damn loan. I'm like, oh, yeah, why is that? He's like, the FBI just called her. He's under investigation. And then I'm like, oh, really? And then that was where it dawned on me. These society is wrong and the individual is right. And I think you guys know the rest of the story. Pretty much every fucking bank in America went belly up and got bailed out by the taxpayers. Uh, this bank certainly did. All these guys ended up getting fired. This guy ended up, I can't tell you, but he ended up having a shitty ass life afterwards. I do keep tabs on him. I do track him because there's a day I'm going to go up. I've done this to other bosses where I've tracked him down. I'm like, hey, congratulations on your cease and desist. Or I did that to one of my bosses. This guy, I'm waiting, waiting for the opportune moment to do it. But again, it's really hard when you got a bunch of guys who got three times the experience and way more gray pubes than you do telling you you're doing it wrong and your livelihood depends on it. I'm you making them happy when all the numbers are telling you that you're right. And it took a goddamn, well, it took an FBI investigation and a goddamn housing crash for me to finally realize just because they're older, they don't know jack shit. Matter of fact, you guys wonder where my contempt and hatred for the baby boomers comes from. It largely stems from this. How you were, you, me, and everybody else have been lied to by corporate America, by employers. Not just necessarily corporate America, but these baby boomers. And I think a lot of you Gen Zers and younger millennials are being lied to by Gen X. I don't know. I've never had a Gen X boss. Larger point is, it, that's another important example. These are major things. Girls or boys, in the case of ladies, your education and now your career. So when you're going in and your livelihood depends on it, and they're yelling at you for shit you didn't do, and I've seen it, man, asshole consulting, I've seen these people get their fucking, they're getting the third degree for things that aren't their fault. Um, what was it? Oh, I forgot the name of the company. Um, oh, shoot. But just mental sadists 
You have no idea how many pathetic, petty, mental sadists are in middle management, senior management, and upper management in a lot of these companies. And how sanity does not rule the day, all right? It, you get ahead in corporate America by conforming and compliance, not by excellence. It's about the only item. But get the, get the book, Batch of Pad Economics. You can read through that about the career section later. Still, the larger point being is careers, corporate America, government, any kind of job, uh, that is another instance where the individual most likely is the only sane one and society, the institution, the entity, the system is completely wrong. <clears throat> and then finally, and this is the most recent <coughs> uh, variation of this, what is wrong with me that I had to look at. And this didn't happen until I was about 36, six, seven, not even a decade ago. And that is where I sat within humanity in part of a social life, but more along in lines of, in terms of intelligence. And this is why I wrote the book behind uh, uh, um, Curse of the High IQ. I'm not joking, guys. Most of you listen to this channel. You're not dumb. Chances are you're pretty fucking smart. I'm not saying that to kiss your ass. But when I had issues with employers, dating, not wanting to go out, um, my education, all this other stuff, it's always you versus the rest of society. And what really answered a lot of it and provided some insight and therefore provided some solutions, but more serenity, peace, and calm and understanding was realizing if you're a very intelligent person. And if you figure out, you take your IQ test, also you got an IQ of 130 or 135 or 140, there's your answer for a lot of questions. You're just almost a separate human being. Uh, think of it on the uh, people who get high IQs. They, they don't understand what happened, what it means if you got an IQ of, of uh, 130. Me and my buddy Tom, we took our IQs a long time ago, back in the 90s. I got like a 136. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm pretty smart. I get okay grades. I didn't, even if I knew statistics and standard deviation and the Bell distribution curve, it didn't dawn on me. My other buddy, he's got an IQ of like 140, um, and he knew it, but he, oh, I didn't think I was that smart. And you don't realize if you're an IQ of 120 and above, you're Ivy League material, you're MIT material, you are genius material. And that does that only mean that you should go into higher things and blah, 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 and try your best, but you have to realize where that puts you in relation to the rest of society. And another way to put this is, okay, forget being super smart. Okay, just forget that. Go the opposite direction. Go two standard deviations to the left of the mean. All right, you got an IQ of 70. You are officially retarded. You cannot function without the help of another adult. Right? That's, the, that's how smart you are as they are dumb. Not to besmirch them. I'm not criticizing people who are mentally retarded. <clears throat> I'm trying to get you to understand that having an IQ of two standard deviations to the right is like being retarded. And imagine how hard it is for someone like with, and not even down, so someone severely mentally having to interact with the rest of society. <clears throat> Think about the chance. Think about how far removed they are from quote normal. You're just as far removed from normal as someone with down syndrome, except you happen to be on quote, the good side of the, of the mean. And you don't see this because you can obviously talk and speak English, you understand concepts and all that, but you don't realize how that ostracizes you socially, mentally, professionally, and romantically. Great, great example I get. These boys, I don't like partying. I want to go out and meet girls. I'm having trouble meeting girls, but then I find out they're working out, they're in good shape, but they're like, yeah, you know, I just, I don't want to go to parties. I just like to stay in and read a book. Your chances are it's an IQ. Chances are you're too intelligent to go hang out with girls. And the reason you have trouble with girls isn't because you can, can't necessarily get them. Young boys, you know, you, <clears throat> this was funny. I remember I was 27 and teaching and I, it, another epiphany moment. When you're a young boy, young man, you look at girls like, oh, wow, they're, they're the goal. They're better than you. Not in a moral sense, but, oh, my gosh, you're, in, you're somewhat intimidated by them. Like, I got to get her, and you're always pointing up. I remember teaching, and here I am. There's like, yeah, I won't lie to you. There's a couple gals I wanted to bang in my class. I'm like, yeah, I, I, when she graduates, I'm going to bang her. And then, uh, without going into long detail, once the grades were starting being handed out, and I realized they're just a bunch of whiny, crybaby, 
trailer trash fucks. Yeah, they're cute, but then I realize, holy shit, they're really inferior. I don't want to hang out with that single mom. I don't want to hang out with this girl who can't even, like, who, who plagiarized an entire uh, uh, paper on economics. I don't want to hang out with the girl that uh, just got her car repossessed because she doesn't believe in paying people back that lent her money. And what you uh, end up finding out, especially if you're smarter than average, is you're not, your trouble with girls isn't that you're not smooth enough or charismatic enough. It's just that, one, you're probably intimidating them because they're average, and two, you're going to have no intellectual interest in them. Do you really want to go to a nightclub? Think about that. Who, who's smart that wants to go to a nightclub? It's loud. You can't talk to anybody. You got to pay a cover. You got to buy the girls their drinks. Uh, and the girls have their bitch shields up and are all about getting attention and not, not numbers. Again, an argument for Daybang by Rouge V. But if you don't know that, you think there's something wrong with you. No, it is absolutely critical and vital that you get your IQ tested. Read the book, Curse of the High IQ, and realize that this is another reason <clears throat> that you might be, not, no, not so much right, I mean, you could be right, but the rest of society is not you. Let's just put it that way. Another perfect example, sports ball. Uh, people ask, hey, you going to come down and watch the game because the Vikings were playing, I think, in the United Kingdom. You know, fuck if I'm waking up early. But no, I don't go to the bar to watch the game. Get myself some wings, man. Yeah, wear another man's jersey. Yeah, man, get some American Eats. Those burgers are so fucking big. You bite it, all the shit falls out, and you're like, oh, yeah, this is great, man. Yeah, give me a Bud Light. Yeah, dude. Oh, You cheer because some fucking guy in a purple outfit caught a ball because another guy threw it to him. All right, if you don't get, if you're not into sports, chances are... Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with people that like sports. But you're probably much smarter than the average person. And you're not going to associate well with other people. And then this brings up out a bevy of other things that apply to all this other stuff. Dating. Let's say you're a really smart girl and there's that really cute guy you want to ask out. And he's dumber than rocks. And you're still trying to go out with him. You're like, oh, he doesn't do it for me. Perfect example of IQ. Nothing wrong with you. Something else, quote, wrong. Not morally, but different about society. Your education. All right, you got a super high IQ. Dude, anybody who gets an IQ of 130, you should be thinking IT, STEM, doctor, surgeon, something. But me and everybody else got super high IQs. No one said, oh my God, you're brilliant and intelligent and you need to go to IT. You need to go da 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 That, that never happened. I was like, oh, I guess I'll go major in finance. I guess I'll go major in business. <clears throat> and that impairs you. And that's another thing, with, another perfect example. You're reading through these college textbooks. Like, why is this... Am I missing something? Is this all there is? Like, I must be missing something because it's got to be more complicated than that. No, you're just way too intelligent for a business degree. If you have an IQ above 105, you should not be majoring in business. It's just too stupid. There's, there's no material there. Career. How many of you get your work done in two hours and then you're like, fuck, now I got to look busy for six. And then your boss yells at you because you're not doing a lot of work, even though you just handed in all your work at 10 a.m. and now you just... And you get fired because your boss, another thing, here again, IQ, there's nothing wrong with you, there's something wrong with society. I could not believe that bosses were intimidated by harder working, smarter underlings. I didn't get it. I thought like, don't you want me on your team? Don't you want to give me more? No, they are deathly afraid and rightly so that you will take their job. Because you will. Not to mention, and this is more the case that I found, <clears throat> I develop software programs, models. I'm like, well, I... We, we, <laughs> working at a bank. I'm like, well, this one model will do all the work of all the credit analysts and some of the bankers. I didn't understand why that scared the piss out of middle and senior management because it's like, well, we can just fire 90% of the people and I'll just do the work of, you know, 12 of you guys, like quite literally a dozen people. And I don't understand why that would intimidate someone. It's because you're so smart. You, you will develop a, not necessarily a technology, though certainly that, you'll develop a technique you're just faster and more efficient that you can wipe out anywhere from three to, to a dozen other people's jobs. Uh, so that's another instance. Well, what's wrong with me? I'm trying to make the company money. Nothing wrong with you. Everything wrong with society. And then uh, socially, <coughs> uh, read Curse of the High IQ. It is a great book, but you know, you'll have a grand old time in school. And I mean K through college because even though not everyone's a genius, there's enough people your age that you will find your group of intellectual equivalents. 
That's why you always had fun in college. But once college and, and that's all done and over, then you start wondering where are all the smart people because now you're dumped back out into normie world. Oh, fuck. You think, what's wrong with me? Why A lot of questions I get are about social life. How do I get a social? Why happened to my friend? Da, 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 da. I'm like, dude, it's not... It, it, you're, you're one in, not even 100, you're one in 300 people. There's only, out of 300 people, one person will have an equivalent IQ to you. You know, I get these really freakishly intelligent people. It's a numbers game, and then sometimes it's just there is no solution. Right? But again, there's nothing wrong with you. You are not necessarily a social outcast. There's something, I hate to use the word wrong when it comes to intelligence because there's nothing morally wrong with being dumb. Uh, it's just, you, you are a statistical oddity. And there's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with society. And, you know, these four things, <clears throat> dating the opposite sex, education, career, and social life slash social standing, not, not in a status way, but where you sit within human, uh, humanity. If you realize, be it IQ, um, be it your work, be it uh, society being brainwashed, being your environment being tainted, be it uh, conformance and not performance, being rewarded in corporate America, uh, once you realize that there are structural things universally wrong with society and that there is nothing wrong with you, you're going to have such an easier life than I did and millions of other people did in the past. All right? You don't want to be arrogant and cocky and say, you know, a girl shoots you, fuck you, I, I, I'm, I'm fucking me. You know, you got, like I said, I say you have to be Cary Grant. You have to give the girl no excuse to reject you. So that if the girl rejects you, you're like, dude, I, there's no way I could improve myself anymore. So there obviously is something wrong with you, right? So you, you, you know, you have to put in, you have to get really good grades. You have to work hard so that when someone says, we don't like, I mean, I'm not joking. I remember getting lectured at because a guy didn't like the shading of gray on my charts. Not kidding. Honest to God. So that when that person comes up to you, you're like, yeah, fuck you. Just go fuck yourself. Uh, you can't say that. but Or when your boss is intimidated because you came up with some new software. Or any, any of these things that don't make sense, as long as you are doing your best, and as long as you have made it so that there is no error on your part, no flaw, no obvious reason as to why you are failing, when you, when you quelch all possible uh, reasons for your failures, all right, then you know that there's something wrong with society and there's nothing you can do about it. It's not your fault. You get forgiveness. You get calm. You get peace. You get serenity. It may not solve the problem. It may not make it that your boss starts to reward you and give you more work. It may not make it so that girls are going to say yes to a date or guys are going to say yes to a date. It's not going to make your career good, but it at least explains things and it stops you from beating yourself up over the head as to what the fuck is wrong with you because there's nothing wrong with you. But that's why we always aim for excellence, to make sure there's nothing wrong with you. And that's, that's it. And that was, that was the hardest question I ever had to answer. I apologize for going long. And I could have just answered it in general as well acknowledging the fact that sometimes there's something wrong with society and not the individual. But I want to explain on those four key areas uh, what I experienced and why that was because I can almost guarantee you guys, you guys are facing the same thing. And I can't make everybody rich and I can't make everybody fall in love, but by God, I can definitely tell you guys how to have the peace and serenity and the, the forgiveness to know, no, it ain't, it ain't me. To have the mental sanity to, to stop running around constantly changing yourself and tweaking this and tweaking that, hoping it, it no, there's nothing wrong with you. But, but a lot of times there's everything wrong with uh, society. So, all right, if you would, go buy my books, Bachelor Pad Economics, Curse of the High IQ, Worthless, and Reconnaissance Man. Those are all pertinent and germane to this topic of discussion. Listen to the podcast. It's called The Clary Podcast on SoundCloud.com. Visit my blog, CaptainCapitalism.blogspot.com. Purchase my shit through the Amazon affiliate link down below if you want to reward me because I don't do Patreon because I don't believe in that. That's uh, do all your online shopping through my Amazon affiliate program. And then just tell people about the old captain. And that is all you can, that is, that is more than enough thanks for helping the old captain out. We'll see you kids later. Toodles.